This is an IBM 5170 AT. It was built 35 years ago in 1984. But it's 2020 now, and we've come a long way. The Nintendo Switch, that thing you use for playing Animal Crossing, has more processing power than what we use to put man on the moon. As time goes on, technology gets more powerful, but it also gets smaller. We can't do this forever, as we're quickly coming up on a problem called quantum tunneling. In the next two videos, I'm going to explain how traditional computers work, why quantum computers are better, and how that's going to affect your security in the future. Part 2. How does a traditional computer work? Everybody knows computers can do what they do by doing math, but computers do math a little bit differently than you and I. The way that you and I were taught to do math in grade school works using a system of base 10. We call it that because there are 10 digits. However, a computer, as many of you may know, uses base 2, more commonly known as binary, using only zeros and ones. It does this because... At the most basic level, computers are made out of transistors, and all they do is act as a gate that either allows the passage of electricity through a circuit, or stops the electricity from passing through a circuit. This is also in the computer represented as a lack of electricity being the zero, and an increase in electricity being the one. Back in the 80s, we packed these transistors as small as we could, but they were still clunky. The way we've been able to make computers both faster and smaller is by cramming more transistors into a smaller area, but there's a problem. If the transistors get too small, we can run into a problem known as quantum tunneling, whereby an electron simply teleports to the other side of the gate. We saw in the last video that the problem with cramming more transistors into a smaller area is a quantum effect known as quantum tunneling. However, quantum physics may actually be the answer, as well as the problem. You see, a fun little quirk of quantum physics is something known as superposition. This allows for a quantum system to be in two states at the same time until it's measured. In quantum physics, you will often hear as particles being referred to as both spin up and spin down. We can use this to create what are known as qubits. Qubits are different from classical bits, like we talked about in part two, where they're either zero or one, because qubits can be in a superposition of both zero and one. Using qubits as opposed to normal bits is a huge leap forward for computing because it makes the math a lot faster. The quantum computer that Google is working on is currently a hundred million times faster than any classical computer that they have. This leap in computing power has an interesting ramification for cybersecurity, but I don't have enough time, so check out the next video. Okay, so now you know quantum computers can do math fast, right? Big whoop, how does that affect you? Well, it affects you because it turns out this is actually a massive security concern. Basically, all online encryption and security schemes that we have nowadays rely on the mathematical security of very large prime numbers. You see, large prime numbers are hard for normal machines to compute because you have to factor them out by trial and error. And modern machines are shit at doing math with only two digits because of the binary system. The problem is that a quantum computer using qubits would be able to do that math much faster because they're in a superposition, meaning they'd be able to factor numbers quicker and find prime numbers that we don't even know exist right now. That means the fundamental math behind the algorithms that protect your email and even your bank is flawed, which is why cybersecurity researchers like myself are in a rush right now to try and find encryption schemes that are more secure in the quantum age. Hello, Future Cole here, and I'm editing this video complete with crazy quarantine hair. And I've noticed that in order to get everything to fit into the 60 second window of a TikTok, I had to overgeneralize some of this information a little bit, and I think that was okay. I feel that my representation of the information was fair, but as this is a very in-depth and interesting topic, I recognize that some people might want a more in-depth review of the information. So I'm going to upload these videos here, stitched together, and then over the next couple of days, I'm going to put together a much more in-depth, much longer video about the actual math and science behind quantum quantum computing that goes more in depth about electron orbital spin and things like that. So stay tuned because that video will be uploaded soon.